This is our last example video for chapter 11, um, although it's not the last video in this um, set of topics. It is the last of our four buoyant force problems, and if you haven't been doing so yet, I really do recommend that once we get started and it seems like you understand how the problem um, should continue, that you pause the video and try it on your own so that you can compare your work with what the answer is um, that we show, rather than just kind of watching it. In the same way that watching a basketball game doesn't make you any better at playing basketball, watching me do all of these examples without you ever really trying them on your own isn't actually going to make you better at these problem solving. These videos are meant so that you can try them at your own pace and then see the solutions worked out so that you can see where things might have gone wrong or you can watch up to where you got stuck and then pause and continue. So for this last example, we have a five kilogram block that is trying to rise to the surface of this water, but a rope is pulling it downwards. Right away, we should in our heads have an understanding of the fact that what that means is that this block is made of something that is less dense than water. It is trying to rise to the surface. If we cut that rope, it would be able to rise upwards. And so it might be something like a lightweight um, wood or cork or something like that. So we have a five kilogram block here and we can start to draw the situation. So we have this container of water. We have this block itself and we're told that it's five kilograms. All right, and we have a tension of 20 newtons uh, that we're told about in the rope. So we can draw the forces out in a free body diagram of this block. Now the block has gravity acting on it. That gravity is m times g, so it's 5 times 9.8, and so it's 49 newtons. It has the tension pulling down on it. That rope is trying to pull this thing downwards. And we are told that that tension is equal to 20 newtons. That's a given value for us. And then we have the water that is trying to push that block upwards with a buoyant force. Okay, so these are our three forces. And just like all of the situations we've had, we are looking at a situation where nothing is moving or accelerating. And so the net forces are zero. The buoyant force up balances these two forces down. So buoyant force minus tension minus gravity equals zero. So that means that the buoyant force minus 20 newtons and minus 49 newtons is equal to zero. So I'll add both of these to um, both sides. And the buoyant force we can say is the density of the fluid, that's the water, times the volume of the block, it's the displaced fluid, but it's the same volume times g, and that's equal to 69 newtons. Now the density of the fluid is the water, that's a thousand, so we have a thousand times our volume times 9.8, and so we can solve for our volume. It's going to be 69 divided by 9800, and so that volume is 0 0.00704. I'm going to keep three significant digits for now. Okay, so what we have so far from all of this calculation is that the volume is 0 0.00704 cubic meters. Now we were asked to find the density of the block. Okay, this is not yet the end of the problem. But if we think back to all of our buoyant force problems so far, and the slide has a discussion of this, we drew a force diagram, we used our buoyant force formula, and what we have not yet done, but are about to, is the fact that density is equal to mass over volume, and that's used in almost every single circumstance for each object in the problem. So I'm going to erase this top corner, the free body diagram, we've already put that information down here below. 
And we're going to add that last piece of understanding that the density of the block, which is unknown to us, is the mass of the block, which was given at the start, over the volume of the block, which we just solved for. And so that density is the five kilograms that we started with divided by the 0 0.00704 cubic meters. And remember, even before we type it into our calculators, we were expecting this number to come out to be less than that of water. And we end up with 710 kilograms per cubic meter. So that is an entirely reasonable density for us. It is kind of on roughly the same um, order of magnitude as a density of water. Uh, so it's not like something super, super light and fluffy. Um, but it is less than a thousand, which is what we knew had to happen for this to trying to be rise, uh, rising to the surface. So uh, for this one, the only thing I had to erase out of the whole problem um, was the free body diagram. But otherwise, the structure of all four of these buoyant force problems is the same. And if you're having trouble kind of seeing that commonality, seeing that common structure, then go back and rewatch those videos and kind of write out in words each step the way that we have in the slides, but in words that help you understand that process. So I will see you in the um, next lecture video. This is the last example video for this chapter, though. So bye for now.